You want to talk about trails? Sure. Um, I was tasked with uh, trail connectivity and I was basically focusing on a couple different areas. Um, you know, Bridgeville's a very walkable town, uh, as we all know, but there's a lot of large detours if you want to try to go from one place to the other uh, in certain areas. Um, so a couple, first one I wanted to focus on was uh, connecting the, li the library to the main business district. Um, you know, this is something that's been talked about over, you know, for years now. And the, li I'm sorry, the um, uh, railroad company, uh, is it Pittsburgh and Central Ohio, or Pennsylvania Central Ohio, uh, they want, they do not want you walking across the tracks. They want you to put a bridge, which would be extremely expensive. Uh, so we're looking at, you know, what would be a way to rectify that and make it a little easier to do. Uh, currently where Berg's is, that's Bank Street extension. And then you have Bank Street, uh, the regular Bank Street. I don't know if it's possible to connect that, connect those roads in theory. And so that you would have to make, so you could put like maybe a, um, a utility road for our borough workers to put up, to get a pickup truck, but that could be like a possible trail to, to, to connect uh, a library to the main street. And it'd be pretty, pretty inexpensive compared to a bridge. Uh, so you're, you're talking an automotive bridge as opposed to a pedestrian bridge? What's that? You're talking about an automotive type bridge as opposed to a pedestrian bridge? No, I'm not talking about an automotive or any bridge. I'm talking about a, because if you go at the end of, if you walk in front of Bridgeville Towers to the end of the right. sidewalk, it's about a three foot drop down to the railroad. So, you, I mean, to put a bridge there would be... So you're talking about a grade crossing? Yes, an accurate oh. crossing. Oh, I mean, we have one, if you go, there's an accurate crossing right down the railroad tracks uh, going from the Tambellini, the old Tambellini's parking lot, uh, right across, it goes down to the railroad street uh, parking lot. There's an accurate crossing. And there's no, there's no safety, there's no, um, you know, uh, pedestrian gates to go up and down when the train comes, it's just a, a crosswalk. So, you know, it's a lot, you know, for some reason it's allowed there. Um, why couldn't we put one, some, something by the library as well? Yeah, that's, that's one. Uh, another one would be connect uh, Cook School to McLaughlin Park. Now, if you're going to walk to Cook School to McLaughlin Park, it's an over a mile walk by going down Ridge Road and all the way down to, I mean, it's, I mean, Dale, you know, you live up on that hill. It's, you're kind of isolated up on that hill. Uh, Cook School to McLaughlin is about 650 feet apart. So put like a switchback trail that goes from Cook School Road, drop in and drop along the hillside and drop you down in front of the, where the old bridge was, the footbridge that goes into McLaughlin Park. And you essentially, in, that would be a, a low cost. You're talking volunteers and equipment uh, to, to move trees and dirt. Um, so that's one, another area I was talking about. Uh, the steps on Greg Street to Laurel. This is one we've talked about for years as well. Uh, Consul looked into it, it's expensive. Uh, you, it's about, we, we estimated about $60,000 to actually have somebody come in, take out the steps and put it in, pour in uh, new concrete steps. Um, maybe there's a better way to do it as far as getting grants, use borough workers to do some of the demolition uh, and, and break it up and piecemeal it uh, in a different way. Then uh, another one would be connecting Romano Drive to McLaughlin uh, Park. There's already a trail there. Uh, it would just, it's, it already exists. It would just need improved and making an, an official trail. And then possibly a trail connecting uh, where Pennsylvania and Missouri is down to McLaughlin Run Road uh, to the end or to the corner there where um, uh, the old equipment dealership was. A uh, small trail could be put in through the woods is there. Uh, you would need a right away with some of the neighbors up uh, with uh, the neighbor, one, 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 at least one or two neighbors up on Missouri and Pennsylvania to go to go between their properties. Um, solution, you know, you could do Wayfair maps. 
uh, with signage showing where the pedestrian traffic could be. And eventually you could tie a, tra a trail system in Bridgeville into a larger trail system like Panhandle Trail or Montour Trail. Um, some of these could be done rather easily uh, using volunteers uh, with equi you know, donated equipment. Uh, others would be a little more involved with like something with going across the railroad, uh, you know, getting try, working with our uh, with, with the railroad to get permission and uh, to, to go and do an act grade crossing. Uh, your funding partners, you know, will obviously be the uh, borough, do grants with CBD, uh, CDBG, uh, Montour Trail, Panhandle Trail, Bridgeville Library, uh, Western PA Conservatory, um, Allegheny Conference, and uh, Pittsburgh Parks Conservancy. Um, you know, that's pretty much uh, what I got. Uh, I think, you know, obviously the value of the community, you know, we're not talking, it's not gonna change work, uh, the community greatly, but it would be a big improvement for, to make our, our town more walkable. And as far as budget wise, like I said, some of them could be done pretty cheap and some of them be a little bit more expensive. Okay, um, Joe Cower, questions, comments? Yes, sir. I do have a, a question, Tim. Um, those properties, the from like from Cook School Park to McLaughlin Park. All right, do we know who owns that property? Well, you're talking about the hill, so I mean, it's a pretty steep hillside, so you have to cut into the hill. Right. I know, I know a lot of the properties up on Ridge go back fairly far. I don't know how far they go back. Um, if they, I don't know if they technically go, go all the way to McLaughlin Run and down to, to the road. Okay. Do we know how does Cook School um, Park extend across uh, Ridge Road or? Does what? Cook School Park that ex extend across? I don't think if, I don't think on paper it does. Okay. So that's all. That, that was originally owned by the Seal Halls and houses on up there. Okay. All, all, all the property is basically um, ban abandoned property at this point. Um, there's several different. It, it's almost all like one piece of property. Okay. But it, it is all, if you get into it, you could have a lot of land problems. So, um, but originally we have a plan as far as council was to take across the street from Cook uh, School Park and put some pavilions and that in there. There was talk back when they were putting in uh, Fetner's estate of rerouting Cook School Park in a different direction to slow traffic. Um, right now, he is basically um, all backed up from taxes, so it could be it could be acquired without much problem. Do you, if you're doing anything over the railroad, do you have to get railroad permission? Does anybody know that? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Absolutely. What is that like? Is that on the we're of magnitude of like dealing with a pen dot in months and years or Act of Congress. <laughs> yeah you're dealing with a federal, federal uh, transportation system okay that's um, i think that's why they say you got railroaded <laughs> actually it's a spur line so it may not be quite as hard but generally speaking railroad is pretty difficult to work with yeah so when I originally talked to the railroad, they were like, they were absolutely not, you're not gonna put a pedestrian crossing over a railroad track. All right. So, so I'm thinking, well, we do have, that's why my idea, you know, open up Bank Street all the way to, you know, technically on paper, open up Bank Street all the way to uh, Washington Avenue. And then, so now you're not, you're not saying, hey, we're not putting a pedestrian crossing. Make it, make it at the, uh, at the railroad as wide as a, a small alley. So, because you could, you're probably going to want um, 
if we have in the winter time to go and plow it, we could make it so a pickup truck could go in there with a plow. I like the concept. Is that already a paper street? You know? I don't know. I always think that it would be because you have Bank Street extension. Right. I do love the idea. Yeah. I always wanted to be able to walk to Berg. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, I mean, you just think of all the people in our library that are, I mean, the library would kill to have have their library connected to the Main Street. They're mm -hmm. tucked back there and, you know, people go, oh, I went to the library for the first time today. I didn't realize it was back there. Out of sight, out of mind. That's a classic example. Well, it, it would provide more parking you being able to use lot two. Absolutely. Well, that's true. I think that's a win-win, but. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Any further discussion regarding uh, trail connectivity? Going once? Going twice? Okay, Mike, move on.